In this video, I'm going to go through the process of changing the limits of integration um, just to make the problem a little bit shorter and a little bit easier to work with. All right, now before I actually work through an example of how to go about changing those limits of integration, I want to look at an example where it has not been changed. All right, so this is an example of integration without changing the limits of integration. Okay, so let's say we had an integral here that we were trying to evaluate. Okay, so the zero and the one here, my limits of integration, these are considered to be limits of integration of x because the equation is in terms of x. I'm integrating an equation in terms of x. I've got dx going on here. So these are limits of integration for x. And under normal circumstances, if you before you learn how to change the limits of integration, you would do your u substitution, all right? And depending on how far you might solve down there, I usually have my students solve all the way down to dx. And then when my students go to replace their u's and use their u in here to see some of the arithmetic, I make them remove the 0 and 1. Because especially at this part right here, I've got u's and x's mixed around in there to all together. And so I can't have limits of integration for x because this is no longer in terms of x. I've got x's and u's at this point, all right, showing the steps. You know, pulling out the one half, crossing out those x's, and getting down to here now, I have an equation in terms of u. So again, I will not let my students write a 0 and a 1 right there because a 0 and 1, those are limits of integration for x, but now my equation is in terms of u. All right, so then we would go ahead, integrate that like normal, all right, get down to a simplified version with a u in there. Once we replace u with the x squared plus 1, then I can legally put the 1 and 0 back into the equation. But all in terms right in here, when I'm messing around with both x's and u's, and then just use right here, you cannot use 0 and 1, because the 0 and 1 in that original equation are limits of integration for x. As soon as you start changing it, you no longer have that. And this does make for a really long um, problem. And then by the time you get back down to here, depending on what you let u be, this could be a pretty complicated expression to be able to plug those numbers back in. So sometimes it just makes more sense to change those limits of integration to limits of integration uh, for u so that we can do it earlier in the problem. And that's what we're going to work on in this one right here. All right, so um, working out actually that exact same problem here. I'm integrating from 0 to 1 of x times the quantity x squared plus 1 raised to the third dx. Okay, now, keeping in mind these are limits of integration for x. So what I'm going to do initially is I'm just going to start at like a regular integration problem here. Let's even do this in a different color here. So I'm going to let my u equal that inside term right there, so x squared plus 1. And I take the derivative of both sides, du equals 2x dx. And then I'm going to go ahead and actually solve all the way down for my dx. So du over 2x is equal to dx. All right, so then writing that down so that we can visualize it. Okay, now I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to then simplify this doing some plugging back in here. So I'm going to remove my 0 and 1 and this step because I'm going to have x's and u's right here. So the x is going to stay. I'm going to replace my u there, u to the third, and replace my dx with my du over 2x. All right, now at this point when I go to my next step, obviously I'm going to pull out that 1 half right there and the x's are going to cross out. It's going to leave me with a u to the third du. All right, but it's at this point right here that I would really like to have different limits right here, different limits of integration. I want limits of integration in terms of u. All right, so then I'm going to do some calculating here. Let's write out here just so we show all the steps. Um, calculate new limits. Well, I didn't spell calculate right there. There we go. Calculate new limits. Okay. Now, what I have to do is I've got to calculate a new upper limit and I have to calculate a new bottom limit. So let's clarify what we're doing when here. So when x equals 1. 
Okay, so when x equals 1, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to say, okay, well, I originally said that u is equal to x squared plus 1. All right, so u equals x squared plus 1. Now I want to change that upper limit when x equals 1. So when x equals 1, now I can replace 1 in right there. 1 squared plus 1, 1 squared plus 1 just going to give me a 2. All right, so when x equals 1, when my limit of integration for x equals 1, u is equal to 2. So I have a new limit, of, um, limit there. Now let's do the bottom one. When x equals 0, all right, well, I originally said that u is equal to x squared plus 1. Replacing that x with 0, 0 squared plus 1, so u is 1. So when my original limit there, limit of integration is a 0, when I have it in terms of u, it's going to be a 1. Okay. All right, so at that point then you have changed the limits of integration. These are in terms of u, these are in terms of x, and now we can uh, finish this out. And it's going to be a lot quicker and a lot easier to do this now because when I integrate here, I'm still going to have that one half out in front. That's going to become a one fourth u to the fourth, and then I can immediately put that one and two on there. So I don't have to put the more complicated expression back in for you. I can immediately jump in and do the um, numeric calculations here. Let's go down a little bit farther though before I do it. One eighth u to the fourth, and then two and one. And I think that's gonna give me a 16 over eight minus a one over eight. Yeah, so that comes out to be a nice little 15 over eight. All right, made it a lot easier, the arithmetic a lot easier there with changing those limits of integration. Okay, so just one quick example of why and when you should remove your limits of integration, when you should use them when they're in terms of x, when they're in terms of u. All right, just a nice kind of thorough explanation of that. Definitely thanks for watching. Be sure and give me a thumbs up and share with your friends. Thanks.